Our next webinar is going to be Supplies and Equipment presented by Elise LeCompte, Registrar and Assistant Department Chair at the Florida Museum of Natural History. Okay, great. Okay. An up-to-date and adequate supply of emergency response and recovery materials and appropriate equipment can mean the difference between minimal damage to the institution and complete disaster. As with all other aspects of emergency planning, it is important to identify and gather the necessary supplies and equipment long before an emergency is imminent or worse after it happens. The first step is to figure out what you need. Based on the particular threats identified in your institution's risk assessment, identify which emergency supplies and equipment you will need. For example, if the institution is located in a floodplain, Clothing such as rubber boots and raincoats, as well as plastic sheeting, sandbags, pumping devices, mops, buckets, squeegees, fans, and dehumidifiers should be kept on hand. For fires, keep an adequate number of fire extinguishers on hand and store buckets, shovels, rakes, and hose. Determine what quantities you will need. How much plastic sheeting will you need to ad adequately cover all of your collection shelving racks? Will two ladders or four hammers be enough during an emergency? Identify sources for expensive equipment that you may not be able to buy, such as generators and refrigerated trucks, and make arrangements well in advance for payment and delivery. You may be able to borrow emergency equipment from local emergency authorities, things like barricades, tarps, tents, drying or pumping equipment, or auxiliary lighting. Remember, however, that you will be on your own in a big event that affects the entire area. Identify nearby sources for the replacement of damaged or inaccessible material previously assembled. Create a shopping list and make sure that several staff members keep a copy of the list off-site. There are many emergency preparedness resources available to help you determine what you might need. The reference that we are using for this Connecting to Collections initiative, Getty's Building and Emergency Plan, has several comprehensive lists of emergency supplies and equipment. For example, Appendix E provides a list of supplies and equipment needed for a first aid box, an emergency response cart, and a disaster supply box. Steal this handbook a publication by the Southeastern Registrars Association is another good reference. Several of the websites that we have mentioned in previous workshops, such as the Northeast Documents Conservation Center and FEMA, have good supply and equipment lists. A basic supply equipment list includes the following, hand carts, heavy-duty plastic sheeting, polyethylene bags, sponges, absorbent towels, buckets, mops, brooms, wet-dry vacuums, fire extinguishers, flashlights, battery-operated radios, cameras, extra batteries, <coughs> crowbars, shovels, lumber, first aid supplies, protective clothing like gloves, disposable masks, disposable coveralls, boots and hard hats, food supplies, and you need to have enough for several days, potable water, three days supply at one gallon per person per day, and paper goods like toilet paper, enough for several days. Once you have identified the kinds of supplies and types of equipment you need, determine what the institution already has on hand. Create an inventory of what is already available, then decide what you need to purchase. Expendable supplies like plastic sheeting and absorbent towels should be designated specifically for emergency response and recovery. If you have these supplies on hand already, but you need to use them for non-emergency related activities, if possible, go out and buy another set for emergency use only. Of course your institution does not have to have two separate sets of equipment like wet-dry vacuums, chainsaws, ladders, and hand tools. However, these items must be kept in readiness at all times. That is, they have to be inventoried, 
inspected, and maintained on a regular basis. So inspections can occur monthly, quarterly, or annually based on the type of equipment um, that it is. It is also important to include copies of operating manuals and instructions for any special equipment like communication dev devices such as walkie-talkies or radios or power equipment such as chainsaws. Better yet, in include annual training in the use of such devices, especially things like fire extinguishers. Uh, so the REACT pack uh, is a commercially prepared emergency supply box and it is available from several different archival supply companies, Gaylord, Hollinger Metal Edge, and University Products. The polypropylene box in which the REACT pack contents are stored is called a rest cube. The rest cube is also sold separately without the react pack contents. The react pack comes prepackaged with a number of useful emergency supplies, including personal protective gear, cleanup equipment like a mop, paper towel and sponges, plastic sheeting, adhesive tape, caution tape, flashlight and batteries, <laughs> trash bags, ties, a clipboard, paper, index cards, pencils, and a china marker. The pros to a prepackaged supply box are its convenience, readily accessible, and ease of use. Everything comes in one box. The box is already labeled as an emergency supply box. It is easily stored. The supplies are well protected within the plastic rescue, which can withstand very high and very low temperatures, it also has a reinforced bottom and comes with three nylon 14-inch cable ties to keep it tightly closed. The cons are the high cost and the limited amount of certain supplies. Each React pack ranges from $228 to $255 before tax and shipping and handling. Smaller institutions may not be able to afford even one React pack. One react pack may not be enough. The amount of certain supplies contained in one cube may not be adequate. For example, the react pack includes only two pre-cut 4 mil plastic sheets of 3 feet by 12 feet and two pre-cut 4 mil plastic sheets of 3 feet by 18 feet. This would not even begin to cover the shelving units in even the smallest collections room at the Florida Museum of Natural History. This means that we have to purchase additional supplies or multiple react packs. The amount of needed emergency supplies and equipment may be purchased more cheaply than buying multiple react packs. Most of the supplies in the react pack can be purchased more cheaply if bought separately. Some, like the plastic sheeting, can be purchased in bulk for discounted prices, then shared by several divisions or departments within a lar larger institution or by several smaller institutions within the same local area. Establish designated locations to store your emergency supplies. These areas can be anything from a couple of shelves on a storage rack, a couple of shelves or drawers in a cabinet, or a corner of a storage room or closet. Label the supplies clearly and mark the locations with highly visible signage, for example, brightly colored paper or poster board. The Florida Museum of Natural History, History uses indelible markers to mark supply containers and brightly colored paper signs to indicate <coughs> supply and equipment locations. The Seattle Museum keeps supplies in large crates painted bright yellow to visually orient staff to the supply caches. Choose the locations carefully. The supplies and equipment need to be easily and quickly accessible. It is important to provide sufficient protection for supplies and equipment so that they will be available and undamaged in the event of a disaster. For example, storing absorbent towels or other dry goods in cardboard boxes in a flimsy metal storage shed when your institution is susceptible to hurricanes or flooding is definitely not a good idea. In this instance, chances are great that the shed, the boxes, and the supplies will be damaged or destroyed during the disaster. Post maps that alert staff members as to where they can find emergency supplies and equipment, such as designated cleaning supplies, 
fire extinguishers, and keys to emergency supply equipment storage areas. It is really important to make sure that all staff, including volunteers, know exactly where the emergency supply caches and equipment are located and who has access to them, including who keeps the keys to the cabinet, closet, or storeroom. storeroom. There is nothing worse than not knowing where the wet-dry vacuum is stored or not being able to get to it when water is cascading down the front of a collection storage rack. It is essential to inventory caches of emergency supplies and inspect emergency equipment on a regular basis. It does you no good to have identified and gathered these items if they have disappeared or are non-functional when you need them. Using a pre-emergency prepared checklist, inventory the supplies. Replace any that are missing and replenish any that are depleted. Repair or replace any broken or missing tools and machinery. Check to see if any equipment needs batteries or chargers. Are the batteries installed? Do you have extra batteries? How old are they? What is the source of pa power for battery chargers? Some emergency chargers are now solar powered. For example, the Econ emergency radio has a solar powered cell phone jack. Do you have first aid kits that are well stocked? Establish a regular schedule, monthly, quarterly, or annually and stick to it. A good time to check emergency supplies and equipment is during the annual review of your emergency preparedness plan or before drills. At the same time, verify that outside experts and or resource information is up to date. Designate one person, such as a member of the Health and Safety Committee or a team of people, for example a member from each of the institution's divisions or departments or several of your volunteers, to be responsible for the regular inventories and inspection of emergency su supplies and equipment. At the Florida Museum of Natural History, our facilities manager tests our battery-operated emergency lights monthly. Our fire extinguishers are inspected monthly by staff from the university's Department of Environmental Health and Safety. But these are all things that you or members of your staff or volunteers can do on a regular basis. Replace batteries in emergency equipment, such as flashlights and radios, on a regular schedule. Using the same schedule that we use to replace the batteries in our smoke alarms, that is, the dates of the fall and spring time changes, will make it easy for you to remember. Make sure to replenish supplies and clean or repair equipment as soon as possible after a drill or actual recovery operation. The institution's annual budget should include line items for purchase, maintenance, or replacement of emergency supplies and equipment. At the Mystic Seaport Museum, each department is responsible for including these costs in their annual department budget. At the Florida Museum of Natural History, the director's office budgets annually for these expenses with input from the museum's health and safety committee. Unless an emergency situation occurs to deplete supplies, maintenance, maintenance costs should be minimal. Also, some of these supplies will last for more than one year. For example, uh, plastic sheeting that we've cut to cover specific shelving units, we've had for um, approximately 10 years. It does get brittle after a certain period of time, but you will be checking that when you check your supplies annually. Establish a credit line with vendors ahead of time to be used in the event of an emergency, for example, with hardware stores, office supply stores, or disaster recovery firms. And this will mean that supplies can be procured and services obtained even if there is no way to pay for them up front. Remember, credit cards cannot be processed in the event of a power outage. The institution may have to fundraise to meet certain emergency supplies and equipment needs. This could be one of the Board of Trustees' responsibilities. Institutional and community members may be willing to donate funds for such expenses or donate the equipment or supplies themselves directly. They would rather give for emergency preparedness than wait to hear from us when we are to totally devastated and needing tens of thousands of dollars. Do not be afraid to solicit donations from local businesses and corporations. 
They may be willing to donate goods or arrange for post-disaster recovery services. Drug stores and grocery stores may be willing to help stock emergency supply storage containers. Office supply stores may donate heavy-duty boxes for moving the collection. A lumber company may supply and cut wood for protective shutters. Some institutional re uh, policies may cover the purchase or rental of emergency response and recovery supplies and equipment, such as portable generators, or things like temporary re re uh, relocation costs and cleanup services. The policy should cover drying, cleaning, and reconditioning of equipment and collections objects. Keep, keep copies of the insurance claim with emergency supplies on site and with copies of other important documents off site. Make sure that members, uh, that someone on staff other than the director or finance manager has access to cash and credit in the case of an emergency. A real emergency for the Seattle Art Museum revealed a financial oversight in its emergency preparedness plan. The downtown Seattle area experienced a major power outage, which could have placed sensitive museum artifacts in jeopardy. Diesel was low in the emergency generator, and the museum was in danger of running out of fuel. Staff had to arrange an emergency delivery of fuel early on a Saturday morning. They realized that they did not have access to cash or to a company credit card to pay for it. The senior deputy, deputy director used her own credit card to pay for it. The museum has since made arrangements with the diesel company and they will accept museum uh, charges on um, company credit. Also, the senior deputy director now has authorization to use the museum's credit card. In addition, the museum now has the emergency generator refueled immediately following routine testing. Those are just a few details to think about concerning emergency response and recovery supplies and equipment. 